to show you something. Can you come here, my beloved? I want to show you how you're supposed to run in leadership. Turn around, face that way. Now, when there's a relay race, there are usually four runners. And the first runner runs out of the block. You put your hand back like this, but you never look back. Because if you look back, you can waste time. So the, 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 the runner who's supposed to take the baton puts his hand back, but never looks back. Why? He expects to receive. You know, there's some young people in your church who've been running that way for the last three years. And you wouldn't transfer. Uh-oh, getting quiet now. And they are running with the expectation that you will transfer to them. Now, if you transfer, some people let you hold it, but they won't let it go either. So you got to drag them, wait, all this weight they got to drag, don't look now, but that's the person sitting right next to you. You wouldn't give up the leadership. Jesus said, it is better for you that I go. Because if I don't go, you won't take the next leg. One last thing I want to show you. Once I give him the baton and he runs, when it's all over, no one person wins. Come on, clap your hands louder than that. Everybody wins. Who are you passing to? Or are you passing at all? You know, I had a dream. And it was a dream that I will never forget. I dreamt that I was at a funeral. And there was a casket up front with a dead body in it. And it was the body of a athlete. And his pitcher was next to it, you know, strong guy. And he was a relay runner. And everybody was filing past the casket, paying their last respects. And then came my turn. I got up and I walked past the casket. And when I got there, I was shocked. I saw this beautiful body of an athlete in the casket. He had his hands over his chest, and in his hand was a baton. Yeah. And then I woke up and I was sweating. And the Holy Spirit said to me, this is the picture of most leaders. They'd rather die with it. Will the young people have to pry it out of your hands in your casket or will you give it up? It is better for you that I go away. If I do not go away, you will not do greater works. I just came to chat with you for a few minutes. What you hear now could change your life forever. I want you to go home and find a few people that you will say to them, I want to mentor you for the next four years. I want to teach you everything I learned. I want to give you everything God gave me. I want to transfer my cloak to you. I want to give you my experience. and I want to teach you what God taught me. 
I want to make you greater than myself. This is the heart of leadership. It's not winning your leg that's important. It's passing the baton. The minute you hit the age of 40, it's time to start passing. Because 40 is a generation. Take a deep breath. So if you're 40 years old, it's already too late. You got to catch up. Jesus began his work at age 30. He started early. What are you doing in your house, in your ministry, in your business? Who are you producing in your company to take your place? I submit to you that Jesus' question is still the question, how long must I be with you? Will you learn this? Will you get it? I feel the anointing of God. Hallelujah. I feel the anointing of God. I feel the anointing of God. So let me close with this statement out loud. Read it together. Go. The first act of a true leader is to identify your replacement and begin mentoring them. Hmm. Your assignment has a shelf life. You have to know when to transfer. The Holy Spirit has created this moment for you to become great. You become great by reproducing people greater than yourself. That's what legacy is about. It's really not about the leader. It's about the leaders. Tell me, why are you afraid to go on vacation? Some people are afraid to go on vacation because they may lose their jobs. That's a sign of insecurity. Some pastors kill themselves because they're afraid to leave the church. Because there's a young man who could preach better than them. And last time he went away, the young man preached and they bought more of his CDs. Oh, come on, pastor, sit up straight. But you see, pastors, listen to me. If you produce a young man better than you, don't get jealous. Take the credit. Don't be afraid of people being greater than you. Produce them. It is better for you that I go away. Because if I do not go away, you will not do greater works. You are my legacy. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, I have delivered what you put in my heart. Transformation is taking place. First of all, we, we repent. We repent of holding on to our positions. We repent of protecting our position. We repent of personal ambition. We repent of looking out for ourselves. Holy Spirit, help us. Help us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You know, in the Bahamas, uh, I started our ministry 34 years ago. 
and they say it's the biggest ministry in the country. The first 10 years, I appointed my replacement, and I ordained him. So he's been running the church now for over 20 years. Can you give up the biggest ministry in the country? And now I'm about to appoint a younger person to take his place. I figured something out. If you hold people down, you got to stay with them to keep them down so you don't progress. Yeah. When you train your replacement, you are free to expand your work. May the Lord have mercy on us.